everybody, it's Greg Rice here in the Bucket, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And before we get going today, this is funny. This, <laughs> this little tag I bought for Nick Dagnello, our CEO. I think it was our first Christmas party. See if we can get a close up of that. And it reads, fucker in charge of you fucking fucks. So now as general manager, I guess this is more applicable on my desk than it was back in the day on Nick's desk. Now Nick has like Aston Martins and fancy stuff over there. So this is like the baton, right? One day Mick will get this and he'll love it. He'll probably add a few more F words. But today's topic, cash for keys, does it make sense? Is it the right thing to do? Whether with your tenant or even with a homeowner, right? That is defunct on their mortgage. So my personal thought, my knee-jerk reaction to cash for keys always is that I never want to reward negative behavior. I don't want to give somebody a benefit for being a piece of okay. shit, okay? I don't want somebody to leave my house trashed, holes in the wall, floors are damaged, counters are cracked, they owe me 5000 and then I got to give them 5000 in cash. So that's my knee-jerk reaction. That's my emotional reaction. But if I want to claw that back and look at does it make sense, does it get results, then my opinion changes. Because I believe that cash for keys can be and is the most effective way to get results, to get that tenant out, get them on the street so you can get back to making money in your property. Now the risk with that is that, you know, today's January 17th. The tenant may say, oh, I need another month to get out. I need until the end of February. I need until March 1st. You can wait until March 1st and plan to give them cash for keys and then they don't leave. So what you need to consider is if you are going down this road, that the cash for keys needs to be instant today, tomorrow, this weekend, then, and each week or day that goes beyond the amount of money that you give should get less and less. So you should structure the payment, incentivize the payment for the tenant to be quick and out and gone. So if they leave today, they get 2000 If they leave tomorrow, they get 1900 If they leave the next day, 18 And you will see results. But if you say, oh, leave on March 1st, I'll still give you the $2,000. they are going to wait till March 1st and say, oh, uh, you haul went bankrupt. Uh, you know, we got, we're, we're trying to, we're waiting for another company to open so we can rent a truck, right? Outlandish. But they're going to come up with an excuse is my point. And then you might have to file the eviction anyway. Secondly, if you do the cash for keys, they agree to the amount, they agree to the move out date, you need to do an inspection with them at that time and withhold any monies for something like debris, something like intentional damage, cracked granite countertop, you see that, fist holes through the wall, through the door, trash piled up, whatever. If there's something there that's excessive, above ordinary wear and tear, you use that walkthrough as a way to claw back some money. With that, I guess you could say number three, is at this inspection, you need to bring security with you. You need to bring people. Strength is in numbers. Don't call the police. They're probably not going to want to help you. They don't want to broker agreements or deals or get in the middle of stuff. They just want to clean it up if it goes south. So if you're meeting, say, you have two tenants, two guy tenants my age, and you're a female landlord, you should not be going to that meeting with that cash by yourself. You should be going with more people than our occupants. So if there's two residents, you should at least show up with two other people. So it's three to two. If it was me, it would be five or six to two because I go over the top. Okay, I want them to be standing there on the lawn. I'll get Don Martone to stand there. I'll get Albert Heideride to stand there. 
I'll get Emilio to stand there. I'll get my dad. He'll just be waiting on the lawn, making sure everything goes smoothly. Now, we all don't have access to those people, but you have access to somebody. A husband, a boyfriend, a friend, a father, a co-worker. Somebody might help you out. So you need to have strength in numbers. And the final thing to consider is that when they take that cash, when you do the inspection, everything's okay, place is cleared out, your people are there, you need to change the locks then and there. Don't let them leave because they might have that key still in their pocket. Come back later and do something bad. Leave the water running, start a fire, start a flood, damage things, break things, move back in. Give the key to somebody else. Who knows? Possibilities are endless. So you need to make sure that you have a quick set lock. We, we really suggest the quick sets because in the future you can rekey them on the ready. So when they leave, you change all the locks, even an exterior door lock. Okay, if it's a multi-family house, change the exterior door so they can't even access the property. And let them know that they are trespassing by bringing a simple agreement that they'll sign. Something that says, I, tenant, agree that I'm vacating XYZ Street, apartment 2, in the town of Pawtucket, on January 17th, and I will no longer set foot on this property. If so, it's considered trespassing. Sign. Boom. So that's really the fifth thing. Sorry. Forgot about that. Again, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan of cash for keys from a morality and just the way I'm, I'm made up mentally. But from a factual and results-driven standpoint, it's, it's the way to go. Just make sure you do it properly. It can get very sloppy, and it can actually cost you more time and money than you intended. So once again, Greg Rice here in the bucket, giving you cash for keys, yo. Your property and your unruly tenants managed.